Sentry mode activated. Target acquired. Hey there hunters and welcome back to the Gunners Guild. Here we're going to have a look at the heavy bowgun and what it's got going on in Iceborne. I'm still tweaking around with light bowgun because there's just so much stuff to do there so that's going to be for another day. It's going to be on the back burner. But anyway let's do heavy bowgun. So first I'm going to talk about the heavy bowgun mods so we don't have to go through them for every other build here. Heavy bowgun has 5 mod slots on all final upgrades, something I really wish light bowgun did. The obvious mods here are the damage mods, close range and long range. These increase your damage by 20% for the first rank, 10% for the second, and 5 for the third and fourth. So much of the bowgun damage comes from using one or two damage mods, which is why when we get bowguns that have to sacrifice all their mod slots for like recoil and reload, it kind of kills the bowgun. So speaking of, recoil and reload is kind of obvious what they're used for, and what you need to know about these for heavy bowgun is that we only need to use enough to have recoil 2 or 1 when applicable, and normal or fast reload, but the caveat is that we cannot sacrifice our damage mods to do it. Thankfully all the good heavy bowguns don't have this problem, so let's continue. Deviation is what normal games consider recoil, it's kickback on the reticle when you fire. Typically we don't need these at all unless you're going to run a wyvern heart build, and only really if you can't manage that kickback. Heavy Bowgun has two special ammo mods, both of which are pretty good. The snipe becomes a single shot that doesn't do damage on wake up, so it can be really good for sleep bombing, which makes it hit like a truck. You can typically do about a thousand damage on a snipe setup and 2k on a sleeping monster that way. The Wyvern Heart mod increases the damage of Wyvern Heart by like 10% or so, and makes the damage ramp up faster. It's another good mod if you're going to build around your special ammo. I would use these definitely. The Barrel mods. Power Barrel increases Pierce effectiveness by making Pierce 1 act like Pierce 2, Pierce 2's act like Pierce 3's, and by making Pierce 3's tick gap closer. This also affects Elemental Pierce, but you don't really want to use Elemental on Heavy Bowgun, so we'll save that for Light Bowgun stuff. It also increases KO value on stickies, so it's a good mod, it has lots of uses. Now the Long Barrel on the other hand, doesn't really do much. It increases critical distance by a few steps maybe, and increases the bullet velocity a little bit. It's not really noticeable, though I can't really see a reason to use this over Power Barrel or like any other mod really. The Shield Mods. Previously in World we never touched Shield Mods because we only had 3 mod slots and sacrificing your damage or recoil for Shield was just unnecessary and bad, because the Shield wasn't really any good unless you had the higher ranks of it, like 3 Shield Mods. Well now we can get 4 ranks of shield, but we don't need that still, 3 is solid enough. And we do use them now actually, it makes for some pretty mindless gameplay, but hey man they work now. And last, but certainly not least, the scope. We all know about the scope, we were all laughing at it from day 1 as soon as they showed it off, we all knew where this was going, it's a 30% damage increase if you can maintain your super critical distance window while it's active. It's probably meant for piercer normals, but well we just slapped it on the glutton because why not. It's a huge pain to use and nobody likes it because it makes Glutton even more obnoxious and it just straight up gives you headaches to use, but it is what it is. Oh and it does not work for explosives like Cluster, Wyvern, and Sticky, the former two being because you can't actually use the scope with them and the Sticky's the initial impact or what would get the boost, not the explosion afterwards, so it doesn't work. And so that's the mods. There are a lot and we use a lot, but let's get into what heavy bowguns are actually using right now. First I'll recap the normal heavy bowgun setup that I had made a video on a while back. Normals did get a slight buff, their motion value is now 34, up from 30 I believe it was in the previous game. They still have a huge problem with damage when it comes to competing with spreads though, because they can't make use of long range mods, and if you're using close range mods, well you're in spread distance. And spread 3s are about 60% stronger than normal 3s, so why use normals? Well ballistics increases your super critical distance window when using the scope, which makes it a lot more manageable compared to spreads, so it's a good segue into getting comfortable with the scope. The range is pretty sweet too, you don't have to hug monsters with normal 3s, but ultimately I'll leave the rest for that video. Normal 3s are okay, but they're not great, they're just kinda usable. Next is what everyone feared, Spread 3 Heavy Bowgun. Spread 3 have a motion value of 8x7, so 56 total, same as base rolled, so no buff or no nerf there. I was expecting Spread to get gimped by not getting a good bowgun to use Spread 3s in Iceborne, but lo and behold, Capcom gave us Glutton 2.0, it's a Zenogre Heavy Bowgun. This thing is fucking ridiculous. All it needs is one close range mod, and it drops your spread 3s to recoil 1, and you have a clip size of 8, and you have normal reload, so you're golden. You have 4 extra mod slots to do whatever you want with. Thankfully, you have some options of what you can do with that. First is full hand mode. 
You slap on a scope and three close range mods. Scope shotgun, something we already knew was going to be meta from the get go. It's pretty much the hardest hitting thing in the game. It consistently hits for three to 600 damage a shot, depending on buffs and target hit zone. But it's just crazy how much damage this thing does. Of course, it's not without its flaws. You're a heavy bowgun, which means your mobility is pretty much non-existent, and looking down the scope means you can't see it all, so you're prone to getting hit if you're not careful. However, in the right hands and with a good setup, the scope shotgun is pretty much just nasty incarnate at that point. Now, if you like spreads, but you don't like the fragility of being point-blank heavy bowgun on a tempered monster, good news! This is where the shield mods come in. Slapping three of the shield mods and grabbing guard up and guard skills lets you tank pretty much anything in the game. Of course, it's at the cost of some of your damage. You're missing out on almost 50% damage when you consider scope and damage mods, but you can't DPS when you're dead, I suppose. Now, I've been playing around with a hybrid of the two builds. I run two shield mods, which is noticeable after you block, there's much more knockback compared to three mods. However, I stopped on a scope so I can guard and scope at point blank for that extra 30% damage. I'm still iffy on it, but I'm using it for now. The extra knockback on guard makes punishing attacks a bit less safe. Another thing you can do is use Offensive Guard, which comes in handy because on a level 4 decoration you get free element and Offensive Guard in 2 and 1, and you might as well use it. Triggering Offensive Guard on a Heavy Bowgun is very annoying though. You need to shoot and block as your shield recovers, and the second it becomes usable, you take the hit. It's very inconsistent though. Another trick you can do is you pull out your Slinger, and then you put it away before you get hit, which will bring up your Bowgun and let you block to trigger your Offensive Guard again. I personally don't like either of these methods, and don't really rely on this skill in general, but it's pretty much free because it comes on free element with the level 4 decos, so it's on the builds anyway. Another build running around is the Pierce Heavy Bowgun. You do have two options for Pierce, one being the Nargakuga Heavy Bowgun and the second being Tobikodachi's. I prefer Tobikodachi's over Narg for sure. It's basically the same bowgun, but Tobi has 5% less affinity, which it does make up for right away with its level 1 decoration. It also has 9 augment slots over Nargakuga's 4, and has custom augments for 6 more raw or affinity. It's pretty much a better pierce bowgun. For augments, I'd recommend going full raw on this bowgun, since the 4th attack augment is 10 chu raw for some reason. It's 10, 5, 5, and then 10. So anyway, pierce heavy bowgun. I'm still not a fan of pierce, but it does work much better than it used to. Blos, Basil, Nurg still get melted by this thing, and to a lesser extent, Joe and some other monsters. Button would probably still destroy this thing in most other scenarios, but I do recognize that not everyone wants to be a scope shotgun hugging a monster, so this is a fine alternative. This setup has a ton of different mods on it too, I use both close and long range mods just to try to maximize my uptime on damage, although I'd expect getting rid of the long range damage mod for just about anything else would probably be a better option in solo play without a cat. One of the biggest things you need to know here is how to make pierce effective in world. Which may sound obvious, but you need to tenderize the bodies of the monster. Most of the time the face is already a good hit zone, but hitting just past that and your damage falls off. So keeping the chest tenderized helps gives you a large soft target that just lets your pierce ran through. Ultimately I'm not a huge fan of the pierce playstyle in world, mainly thanks to Heavy Bowgun's mobility, but I do acknowledge that it's much more usable now than it used to be, and it can still definitely pack a punch. So if you like pierce, by all means use pierce. The last thing we have is Old Faithful. It withstood the nerfs and has come back angrier than ever. Clusters. Now, obviously we can't do beer clusters anymore since they have their ammo capacity and you can't point blank them, which is hurts a lot more than you realize. But the new bowguns came with a substitute, Sticky Threes. Previously, we didn't have any bowguns that could do clusters and have good recoil and reload on Sticky Threes, except for maybe the Zora Heavy Bowgun, which had pretty low raw. They also gave us 30 blast nuts to carry instead of 9, so we can make much more ammo now. We can actually use them as a primary ammo source. So clusters today is a lot like clusters of old, but now we pepper the monster with stickies to get the KO first, and then rain fire on them with clusters. And you do have some options here as well. First off, the old school Zora Heavy Bowgun with status and clusters still works. In fact, it works even better now, since with all the extra mods you can use, you can take the recoil of clusters down to recoil 2 and have slow reload instead of very slow. It's kind of gross how fast they fire, but again you burn through your ammo really fast. The downside here is that there's not really enough ammo to get through a hunt on its own with just the clusters and some stickies. You need other things like traps, rocks, bombs, stickies, or teammates to make the most of this route. The second option is sticky and clusters. You're probably familiar with this sort of setup already because stickies are very popular right now. I went with the Rajang Bowgun over Shara here. This thing just hits so much harder than Shara Heavy Bowgun, I swapped that out immediately. Not only does it hit harder, but it's got, in my opinion, better ammo. 
It has para 2s and spread 3s on auto load if you need some extra damage in a pinch and run out of stickies and clusters. You can run sets with either artillery 5 and spare shot or artillery 3 and true spare shot. So one thing you need to know is that stickies do have a damage cap based on the raw of the bowgun. It's basically 2 times your base bowgun raw, so if you have a bowgun with 300 raw, 600 would effectively get you capped. So things like Artillery 3 would be 30% increase, Feline Bombardier would be 15% increase, that gets you like 450. Foods and buffs are worth 55, so at that point you're at 505. Then you gotta figure out how to you get your last 100 attack. So attack, agitator, peak performance, heroics, all that jazz. Basically though, if you want to hit that damage cap, you need Artillery 5 or heroics, or you can lose a little bit of damage and run True Spare Shot for some extra ammo. They're close enough in maximum damage output that it shouldn't really matter one way or the other, so it's your choice. I prefer true spare shot setups though because that means I have to reload less and I get a few extra clusters out of it. The last setups are basically for memes at this point. What I would call claw draw heavy bowgun is the frostcraft quick draw bowgun set that's going around. The shara heavy bowgun with the snipe special ammo makes the claw attack do one single hit which is a draw attack and can crit. So frostcraft, crit draw, crit boost and some raw and you're pretty much good to go. It's a pretty funny setup that obviously focuses on clutch claw attack and it's kind of hits pretty hard, I'm kind of surprised about this one. But I don't think it's really all that effective on a lot of monsters, especially once you run out of mantles, but feel free to give it a try. The last builds are also super niche in that they're special ammo builds. I put together a sleep bombing setup with a Zora heavy bowgun for snipes and status support, and while it kind of does work a bit, it's super clunky to use and it's kind of hard to maintain everything. I can't really do a whole lot while you're waiting for snipe to finish, so it's definitely not a gun for solo play. And Wyvern Heart builds are also super strong right now, especially with the Rajang Bowgun. But the deviation kind of kills it, and all the strong Bowguns with Wyvern Heart all have high deviation, which makes handling the Wyvern Heart extremely difficult. To get the most out of your heart, you want a scope and ballistics, and probably one or two deviation mods just to hold it down on the monster's face. But trust me, it's difficult to see where you're aiming, especially with the scope and heart going off at the same time. I don't like it at all. But heart is still super strong. You could probably cut off a third of a monster's HP with a well placed Wyvern Heart, assuming all the hits connect. And then you can fall back on like auto load spread threes or a sticky cluster backup. Woo, okay, so that's kind of a lot to go over. That's basically what Heavy Bogan has going on right now. Surprisingly, it's a lot more diverse than it used to be. And if you're wondering about Elemental Heavy Bogan, I still don't like it. True Crit Element for Heavy Bogan is a 1.7 times modifier, which is fucking amazing. And while it sounds great on paper, you're only hitting for about 15 to 20 more than a light bowgun, and I do not want to deal with heavy bowgun's mobility as that trade. I will try to throw some builds together later on when I get some decent decorations to do that, so I can give them a try at least, but they're kind of on the back burner for now. So alright, that's all. Thank you all for watching, and good luck out there hunters, and whatever you may be hunting.